Hi everyone, it's Heidi from FlutterbyHeidi.wordpress.com back again with another of my love and affection series of pillow gifts for my lovely crafty friends that I'm sharing some time with in Amsterdam. So this time it's another envelope punch board box, so again that's a part of the theme and, and if you open it up, in here is the most adorable macaron candle. So you can have a macaron that is calorie free. You see I've just popped a bit of uh, uh, paper in the bottom there just to finish it up. And again it's just a simple slide on box um, but again we've made some sort of layers and I'm going to show you a second way of getting this same effect without using your markers if you haven't got them. So here's our candle. So it's again a lovely sort of flirty flamingo kind of colour and we're going to start off making our box with our envelope punch board. So, envelope punch board at the ready and you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is 13.5 by 13.5 centimetres and you're going to punch and score at 4.6 and at 8.9. And then as with all of these you just follow that around to create a box and you follow it following around means you line up the score line with the pointer and that creates a box and obviously this is a little square box to fit that candle. Okay. Now, because we're um, with with this one, because our flaps are going to be on show, we just use the corner rounder function at the top there. Hopefully, you can see that. You just slide it in and press down, and that rounds off the corners for you. Clear away our little trimmings, and then you're going to come in and fold and burnish those score lines. Having done that, come in with my snips, which I've now found, and because it's a square box, you'll see this I do this on a square box, I tend to fold my flaps into each side to keep it nice and even. And again, we're just notching out. Then on the inside, you're going to fold each of those flaps in and you're going to put some um, glue on there. Now I'm going to use my fuse. So again, as we've said with the fuse before, lightly does it, so just flick and tick, so down and tick, and that just breaks the contact with the, with the glue so you don't get any stringy bits. And so the gentler you are, I find the better it works. Then all you do is line those sides up, and there's our little box all ready to go. Okay. And to pop inside it I've just cut a simple piece of uh, cardstock and this is um, card is uh, 4.9 by 4.9 so just a little bit less than the out measurements of the box and then just a bit of glue whatever you happen to have to hand pop that in the bottom there pop our candle in there is space around it so you could put some tissue paper in there if you want to stop it rattling then I just fold those four sides in and then we can make our um, wrap to go around it. So I've got two pieces of, um, of paper here, a piece of cardstock um, which is 4 by 18.5 and um, no it isn't, that's the, that's the outer piece, that's 4.5 and the DSP is 4 centimetres so you just get that little layer on the inside and then you're going to score both pieces in exactly the same way so bring your trimmer in and you're just going to use your scorer um, to score at 4 at 7.1 at 12.3 and at 15.4 so it just avoids that horrible join and do exactly the same on your DSP um, so again we come in and we're going to score at 4 centimetres 
12.3 and 15.4. So put our board away and then just gently fold those with, a, with your fingers and you're going to just put a bit of adhesive on the, on the end there. So I usually somehow find that there's usually one way that it fits better than the other. I don't know why that is, but it just somehow seems to. So once you've lined it up, just again a bit of fuse, and I tend to use fuse because you want a strong bond on those. And then I've done this, the DSP wrap separately. I did try it by scoring both at the same time, but found it didn't quite work. And then what I do is I literally just line it up in the middle there with a little bit of glue on the inside and then you can bring it around we go. and the DSP I've used here is Love and Affection again but and this is one of the copper foiled pieces so there's our, our box and then we're going to use the same technique um, to make a smaller stitched frame label so I've already cut um, a stitched framelit using this size here. So this one is the round about four and a half in four, four and a half inch, four and a half centimeters. So I've cut one and then I'm going to pop it in there and just literally once I've kind of lock it in where you can feel the other pieces. So that holds it in place and then just pop it through your big shot. I use mine with a magnetic plate um, because I just find it makes life a bit easier, it's less likely to slip, but I do find that piece of tape helps. And then all you do is just peel that away and there you've got your little dinky stitched framelits. So now we've got two ways of doing this. First of all you could use this stamp here which comes in the Love and Affection and colour it in with markers or you could use the separate stamps and colour and use use your ink pads. So if you haven't got markers, uh, which is what I've used on this one here, then you'll need your floaty flamingo and your mint macaron. And then quite simply, just come in. And I usually do a couple of sprigs first, and then I've deliberately put my flowers. Hopefully you can see that they're already on together. That one obviously needs cleaning. I'm going to pop those quite close together because you don't want too big a gap, like so. Okay, and then pop them in the mint macaron. Sorry, not in the mint macaron, the flirty flamingo. And then come in again. And again, just come in then, and because they're photopolymer, you can see where to pot, pop those. And then you can just add more, more or fewer flowers as you, as you choose. So I'm just going to pop an extra little one in there. So I've got my three, and then I'm going to do a little one here. little petal on the edge and that's what happens when you mix up your ink pads you end up with a bit of mink macaron so that's how you would do it if you didn't have the markers and if you do have markers and I certainly you know I really would recommend that you use these um, get these markers because they make it such a pretty effect on stamps all you do is you use the brush tip end and come in and color whatever bits you want to on your stamp. So I've just coloured all the kind of leaf shapes with mint macaron. Then come in again with your brush tip and just, and I always try, if you can, try and sort of swirl with those. Then literally breathe on, on it, huff on it. And that way you get your coloured stamped image like so. 
and that's so there are two ways to kind of get the effect depending on what um, you have available to you and then all you do is layer that up on a small piece of um, of DSP DSP or even cardstock which is 4.5 by 3 centimeters and because it's flat I can just use my fuse to pop that on a layer there and obviously that shows through those stitched shapes and then that can pop on the top there and there you have a couple of pretty little gift boxes that you could use for rings, jewellery or as I have for that pretty calorie free macaron. Thanks for watching, hope you join me again soon. If you need to buy any of the products just visit my Stampin' Up shop, details are in the description bar below or visit my blog and there's a link to my shop on there as well. Come back and see me again soon and bye for now.